Okay, now I'll call this meeting to order for September the 6th, 2022. Now that summer is pretty much over, we can move on to the fall time. I'm sure that everybody had a good summer, summer vacations, family and friends. And hopefully this nice weather continues on for a little bit longer. The result of the agenda for September the 6th, 2022, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's okay. I understand that Councillor Bobic uh, will not be with us tonight, and Councillor Morio is attending by video. And I believe that also uh, Chief Fedorchuk is uh, also absent tonight. Result of the minutes of the August 2nd, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving on to 6, 6.1. Result of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Email dated August the 19th, letter dated August the 16th, and invoice dated August 23rd, contract policing monthly year to date report dated June the 30th, and contract police reconciliation reports dated June the 13th, and statement of account for 2021-22 be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. So I see there's a, an adjustment uh, of 81,305. So that's money we haven't paid yet, I'm assuming that we'll have to pay um, out of, I guess, this year's budget or that we haven't budgeted for, correct? Uh, maybe uh, CFO Ganita. Yes, that's correct, but they also credited us what we paid for the retroactive pay increase. Okay. Uh, Councillor Morio said that to expect that, so we did get credited for what we paid already for the retroactive pay increase until the, it's, I guess it's still in negotiations, uh, hoping that the federal government will cover the cost of the retroactive pay increase. Okay, um, so does that show up in any of these documents, the, the retroactive pay, pay credit show up in any of these documents we have on our agenda? Because the only one I see is the invoice for 404. See, see a full uh, They just reduced the amount. I've, I've verified that the amount was reduced by the retroactive that we that the town has paid so far they, they didn't show it separately they just reduced the amount the amount would have been higher if they had not deducted the part of the retroactive pay increase that's been paid or in and on past invoices anything further well i i guess so there's no there's no paper trail showing we've got that credit then or do you have documentation yourself that we got that credit? I worked. I worked through the calculations. Okay. Of what, what, what they said our quarterly bills would be uh, compared to what they actually invoiced us is lower than what they said they would be invoicing us by the amount of the retroactive pay increase that, okay. that we paid already. Because because this bill here is for uh, I guess this quarter would be three hundred and twenty three thousand. And so that's after the credit, so it would be even higher for the quarter. Correct. Oh, wow. That's, that's unreal. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess it is what it is, but that's, that's unreal. Deborah Van Wintoni. So <clears throat> just so that I'm clear, CFO Ganita, we received our credits. We still owe that money. Uh, and we're still continuing to pay the amount um, with the retro pay and taking the credit. 
And then in the original letter that I see here, it is stating that no re retro pay has been um, has been invoiced to us at this time. Are we? Do we know what that retro pay is actually going to be, and what amount that might be? We, um, go ahead and see if Oganita. Well, the the latest estimate, and it, they keep changing it every few months. The latest estimate was two hundred thirty-five thousand. <coughs> okay. For the discussion. Council Morio, have you heard anything more on that uh, retroactive pay since we are discussing that, sort of? Uh, the, the only update on that is, uh, I guess, at the last FCA, uh, a resolution was approved there as to be one of their top priorities to uh, negotiate with the Justice Minister on that as one of their main files. So. Okay. Any further discussion? Deputy Mayor Wintoni? We just want to share the total costs of what we see there. The On the invoice? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the total invoice, um, which is a uh, quarterly, I'll just give the, bring it up here again, uh, the quarter ending uh, June the 30th, 2022 is $323,509. And then there's some reconciliation from their final from 2021-22 for 81,305 and 64 cents, which brings a total of 404,814 and 64 cents. And for the total 21-22 year, comes to a total of. One, yeah, sorry. sorry yeah. I didn't mean to put you on that. No, no, that's fine. I just got to open it here. 1.255, uh, $1,200,555,095.65. And there's an adjustment there too of that 81305 Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.2, result of the Royal Canadian Mountain Police email dated August 24th be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, Councillor White. I think it's important to note for our uh our community that if the RCP member is missing more than 30 days for health or <coughs> etc., we're not paying for them. That's the bottom line. I think people were concerned that in fact uh, we were paying for them. So they're away 30 days or more, or more, we don't pay them. Councillor Delorier. Not a question on the content, but more so uh, a procedure internally within the town. When we receive an email like this, does the does the actual email get uh, attached in the uh, official minute book? Like our minutes? Yeah. Uh, like if 20 years from now when somebody's going through the minutes and sees this resolution, is the email included as part of the minutes? No, no, our minutes are just our resolutions that pass. We don't put all attachments on in our recorded minutes. Okay. But anybody can request to see this, though. Go ahead. So, if a, if a resolution is uh, says attach as per Schedule A, and it's th then that gets put in the minute book. Yes. Okay. So it has to actually be a schedule of the resolution That's to actually go into the minute book. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor. It's carried. 6.3 result of the building permits 4222 <coughs> through 5022 with a total estimated value of two million three hundred eighty seven thousand five hundred dollars be received moved by councillor white 
Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Got a fair amount of building going on uh, in town right now. Yeah. And more on the horizon as, to, as far as I understand. Resolve the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor White. Second by Deputy Mayor Montoni. Discussion. Councilor <coughs> Morio and then Councilor White. Uh, Mr. Harvey, uh, do you have a anticipated start date for the road base work on 13th and 3rd South? I uh, yeah, should be starting up uh, probably next week. Okay. And what exactly is happening there? Uh, we're going to be lowering 13th um, a little bit so that there's not a hump when you come, or sorry, not 13th, 3rd, because at that intersection, it's higher than it should be. So we're going to lower that okay. a little bit so that the pavement would continue straight through, and then we're going to raise up uh, some of the catch basins so that they'll be in place for when the, if the pavement is uh, approved, then they'll be in place for that. Okay, and then so with that, uh, uh, potentially for the local improvement, well, when will the residents get notification on that? Uh, is this all or is it next year? It'll be this fall. That'll be, well, late fall, early winter. Okay, okay perfect. Councillor White. Uh, two points. I, I want to compliment uh, Mr. Harvey. He's working with a company that potentially will remove, <laughs> remove the the bouquet, if I can call it that, from our lagoon, that which we all love. I know he's doing a lot of work at, at the lagoon. I had the uh, opportunity to spend too much time out there. <laughs> and uh, hopefully it'll work. I think it's a six-month trial. It costs the town nothing. And if it works, it'll get rid of that, that smell and possibly a lot of other good side effects. So it's a work in progress, and so hopefully that will, will happen. Uh, the other thing I'd like to ask about, and I know it's not our responsibility, but driving into uh, Swan River from the east, I don't know where the lines are on the streets anymore. Like they're so faded, and there's two or three, and I, there was nearly jockeying before trying to figure out what where the line was. So, is that appropriate to ask you, sir, to maybe yeah. nudge a highway, say, "Hey guys, we're going to have an accident. How do you know where the heck the lines are?" Uh, specifically done by quick stopping there. My goodness, it was it was difficult to see the lines. So thank you. That's it for me, sir. Okay, Councilor Delorier. I guess I just had a comment on the lines as well, Count, similar to Councilor White's. Is, I guess I was just going to, I know we had talked about this last meeting, but just uh, to push back on highways a little bit, I see some private businesses around town that got their lines painted with yellow paint, so can't be that sh short of yellow paint if, if other people are able to get it. So and yeah, I'll uh, reach out. Yeah. I like the term reach out. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 7.2. Result of Protective Services for August 2022 report be received. Moved by Councillor Montoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Just White. A, a compliment to Chief Fedorchuk and his team. Uh, I like that they posted on Facebook where they did, what's happened, and it removes a lot of doubt where were the fire trucks, and people don't have to run around and find out and follow the <clears> trucks <throat> around, heaven forbid. So uh, I, I think it's important to keep them, keep that communication with our public, and what our team is doing, and for all sorts of reasons, uh, a wonderful fire department we have locally. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3, result of the July 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, Councillor White. Uh, just a point of interest, uh, the Immigrant Services uh, Community uh, reached out to, uh, I think, Mr. Poole, and certainly that's a, that van is available for rental. At a, I feel a very reasonable price, as they did. 
So a lot of our immigrant people who weren't getting to do specific things in our community <coughs> were able to rent the van, whatever it's called, and go to places within our community. It, I, I just have to state that our, our, our provincial grant is based on that it is used by dis, people with disabilities. So it's not fully rented out to just anybody. Yeah. In order to get that grant, we have to follow the rules. But uh, I figured it was immigrant families. I made the final decision when we would do this. But that must Thank be you. clear. They appreciate it. <clears throat> Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Council reports. I'll start with uh, Council Morial. Uh, quiet two weeks. Uh, the only meeting we had was the, uh, I don't know what number you want to tag to it, G75, whatever. We met with uh, uh, the partners there uh, last week, Monday. Um, unfortunately, we had some that were not able to attend due to prior commitments, but uh, we had some uh, great discussion on some uh, contentious issues that affect the four municipalities. And, uh, no shattering decisions were made, but uh, at least we had some dialogue and discussions to move things forward. And that is all I had for the last two weeks. Okay, thank you. Councillor Friesen. Um, I was at a community care meeting last week, uh -huh. and they're talking Spooktoberfest once again out at the museum going to open it up like they have done in the past. Um, I also attended the G5 meeting, which I thought was very interesting. I really enjoyed the uh, <coughs> Swan Valley School Division presentation. I thought it was very, very interesting. And I'm doing Meals on Wheels this week, so that's my claim to fame, claim to fame, claim to fame. That's it, thanks. Good, well thanks for doing that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Montoni. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't part of the G, G, G meeting. The G meeting. I don't know how many, <laughs> what number we're attaching to it anymore, but um, I trust that the rest of my colleagues were able to represent the town of Swan River. So thank you for that. Um, and I, I guess we are closing out summer and back to our regular program scheduling. So I'm looking forward to that. And then, of course, uh, elections coming up, so please uh, be prepared to exercise your vote. And if you are interested, there's positions that are available in every municipality, I would imagine. So get your, get your form, your paperwork, your <coughs> forms in, and please exercise your right to vote. Thank you. Okay. Elsa <clears throat> Dolore. Um, Nothing much to report except uh, just want to comment on on the the G meeting I guess that we're calling. We'll have to pick some sort of number, but uh, you know I gave a little bit of a spiel there on on amalgamation in the valley, and I, I meant what I said. I think we need to move to that. The last four years, if anything, has proven, and you know you could sense the frustration on other councils whether. Whether we all felt that we were on the same page with the frustration, I think maybe that could be debated, but I think we were all frustrated to some extent on on either not being able to work together as constructively as we'd like. Um, you know, some some of it was uh, cart before the horse issues where, where we want some of the benefits that as far as decision making and, and flexibility that amalgamation would provide um, that isn't there yet. And unless you do it, it won't be there. Um, but it, we really need, you know, it needs to start becoming a topic of discussion now because it will not happen overnight. If you start talking about it now, we'll be lucky to have it happen in the next decade, but it needs to, it needs to happen because we cannot keep going the way we are. Um, you know, I, I, I really think that uh, after this, this next term, that needs to be a focus is on, on how we can move in that direction. Um, because there's too much, well, I've got to watch my words because I already got chastised once, but there's too much squabbling over the, over the small stuff that isn't moving the valley ahead. 
And you know, every we're going to see in the upcoming paper, every candidate from every municipality is, is going to say that they are running with the valley focused in mind. But when your electors are only a small subset of the valley, it's pretty hard. You know, it's it's a natural consequence of that of either you know either ward system or you know we basically have the ward system amongst amongst municipalities with four municipalities having uh, <clears throat> only four uh, or only being elected by a certain mem uh, portion of the valley. It's pretty hard to have the entire valley's interest at heart when you don't represent the entire valley. When when some decisions are going to be hard decisions for you know, maybe small sections of the valley or, you know, you may maybe be holden to a, to a small core voters rather than the entire valley as a whole. You know, we're going to read that, those very words in the paper in the upcoming, uh, or, in a, or in any media advertisements in the upcoming weeks in the election. But in order for that to actually be true, I think we got to move in that direction. You know, I spoke on that at the G meeting and probably a lot of people didn't really like it, but I, Firmly believe that that's the case. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Nothing's going to happen, obviously, in the remainder of this term, but I think that's something that needs to be worked towards. That's it for my report on the G meeting. Okay, thank you. Councillor White. Well, I, I echo uh, Councillor Delore's comments. Uh, it's, it's so important that we learn to work together, and if amalgamation makes that happen, it helps the Valley as a whole. Because the stronger Minnetona, Bozeman, Birch River, everywhere is the stronger we are. I think we all have to work with similar themes. Uh, on my activities recently, I, I had the tour of the lagoon uh, with uh, Mr. Harvey, and it's nice to see the, the progress they're doing and the work they're doing. I had a, another trip to, to Russell, and I, I had a tour of the potash mine. And that was a, an aside, but what they do there, one individual, he recruits so many of his workers from the Philippines. He has a contact person in the Philippines who does the interviews, brings the people in. They do a Zoom meeting with those individuals in the Philippines, and then I believe they fly over and do a live interview once they've got a, a fixed number. So I, I just see help wanted all over our community, and I'm thinking, Jeepers, maybe that's something we should entertain. So as a consequence, that I'm going to. Uh, I've started already, we'll be talking with the economic development officer, why do we need an economic development officer? Why don't we have one? Uh, I'll be connecting with her and uh, seeing how they do that and I'll report on that another day. Uh, recently I did a, a CBC interview uh, regarding uh, our progress in medical professional recruiting and uh, talk about the wonderful things our community, our team has been able to do. And uh, they're pretty excited about that. And we actually talked today again, and they want to keep in the loop specifically with the CT scan, where that is going. Uh, the G4 meeting, uh, the, the new economic potential development model, where we'll bring people from throughout the valley, two from each of the G4s, and those individuals will try to plan a strategy where economic development goes, who are not elected people. And I believe uh, Ryan Imaker and uh, Brent Scales have volunteered to represent the town. So I'm pretty excited about that potential. The airport issues are the airport issues. There will always be some, but the majority of those meetings are positive. Uh, the CT scan uh, it was, I believe, accepted by the G678, whatever they were, that we won't stop that funding that model. And what we have to do, we have to pick up the tempo because I believe we're plus or minus two, three doctors short now. So we got to get out and we got to get moving and get, uh, getting more docs to us. We have to uh, pick up our energy from our end, our community end. It's not going to look after itself. And the school division, uh, you alluded to counselor, I think a wonderful partnership. Uh, they do so much for our community, for people in general. It's something we have to nurture. And, Hopefully the other, I think we have five of the G5 there and others weren't able to make it. Uh, and an aside, I'm led to believe there's a new rink being refurbished, a hockey rink in Camsack yeah. right now. Is it worthwhile to consider driving over there and saying how, what's happening, how's it going, what's costing what? We did in June. Perfect, thank you. Uh, relative to the CT scan, I'm going to squeeze the mayor publicly. Uh, through verbal means, I'm going to ask them to put a little heat on the uh, Minister of Health, say, where is the CT scan, which committee, they put two million, wonderful, a lot of great things, 
But when? I, I need a when. I need. I think we have to nudge more from our end. Nudge politely. Thank you, thank you. But our community has raised a lot of money. It's a need. Uh, we need to squeeze. I know our MLA is it's number, it's number one priority right now, but I think if we can help him from squeezing from our end. And I think I got it all. Thank you, sir. <coughs> All right, thank you. I'm just uh, making a note of that, and I think that, you know, it doesn't hurt to keep, you know, nudging uh, the Premier or the Minister of Health and Both. with uh, um, uh, MLA Wochuk, you know, uh, you know, because we definitely want to have some report. I think along the way, sometime we're going to hear maybe with uh, Council Morial sitting on the board too. Maybe you'll hear a little bit more, you know, <coughs> what's happening closer to the ground. But we'll keep doing what we need to do, and uh, hopefully we can see that sooner than later. Um, for me, uh, yeah, with the G meeting, if we want to call it that G eight, I think it was intended to be that night uh, with inviting the uh, First Nations, Sapotoyak Cree Nation, as well as Wasquisipic. Uh, First Nations, unfortunately, were not able to attend. Um, but uh, uh, some of the more important things that, uh, from them, as far as uh, one of the items of the, of the, on the agenda, was the um, Federal Boundaries Commission review, and uh, and they have uh, had told us that they were opposed to it. As far as their uh, being attending or presenting anything, that I don't know right now at this time. But they had told me that they were opposed to it. Um, uh, school division did an excellent job of, of uh, telling us how they have done such a great job of, of managing uh, some of the uh, more important advanced uh, education pieces to our school division, and uh, it was brought up that how you know that amalgamation and what that amalgamation did for the Swan Valley, and uh, if we want to talk about amalgamations, that it's a prime example of something that can work very well and that's a big piece of the economic development pieces that they actually mentioned in in that uh, in that report so we we do have a really good school board that's working uh, very actively uh, in many in many areas um, the CEO pool and I had actually an opportunity to speak uh, to Thompson River University actually last uh, little while ago, but I didn't report it. And uh, we had uh, with us uh, Sapatoya Cree Nation in the, in the interview, and that was Chief Janai. And uh, we talked about our relationships and how we have grown with relationships. And we will talk about reconciliation. We talk about uh, TLE agreements, like the three that we have, and the one that's actually in the works right now. Actually, Chief Janai just told me the other day that it's, it's actually been approved now, so moving ahead with that and their um, development of that land that they had purchased. But um, it, was, it was a good interview, a lot of questions that were asked and, and some suggestions also that were kind of thrown out to us as far as what this community can do to keep on working towards uh, a really good relationship and uh, with uh, our First Nations and, and, and also with our Métis government. Um, last week, um, had a, we we're talking about healthcare a little bit, but last week I had an opportunity to sign on behalf of the uh, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation and the doctor or the uh, medical recruitment uh, team uh, five uh, return of services uh, agreements with uh, uh, <coughs> LPNs. So it's pretty uh, exciting uh, to have these five students, or I guess they're not students, these graduates that have now joined our team here in Swan River and, and help the, the workload of our um, nurses that have been needing a lot of help for a while. So they're gonna continue on with that. I've got another application here just to, this, today on uh, another person that wants to, uh, or is looking at advancing their career or their uh, education in, in nursing. So um, they're, they're hearing what our uh, return of service agreements look like, and we're talking about even exp expanding that perhaps to EMTs and to others. So we're definitely keeping uh, the door open when it comes to that. And that was the whole intention of that um, of that fund that we have, and, and uh, we'll continue on working as hard as we can with that. 
Other than that, I think that it's good for me. Everybody else had mentioned most of that. Uh, Council, what, you had a question? Just a couple of comments. I, I want to thank Council Mario and yourself and uh, Council Delorier for being part of that team that developed those return of service contracts for the, uh, the LPNs. And the UCN is actually talking about doubling, I think, to 40 students taking that LPN course. And then if we can get the bridging, or they come our ends, wouldn't that be wonderful? And you alluded to, which I think we all agree on, is the partnerships with West Pacific and Sapatoweak and MMF. Now think about our arena, once, hockey rink, once we get the numbers crunched and how much we need or don't need, I'm assuming that we would reach out to other partners. And uh, the indigenous people would obviously be one, the LPSBL, but uh, there's so many partnerships available and I think that brings the community together. So thank you for leading the charge of that, sir. Thank you. All right, then we'll move on. Anything from our CEO? Uh, I know that you don't have a report there, but uh, you have been on holidays. But if there's anything that you want to yeah. reach out or, or to uh, to highlight. Prior to my holidays, I did meet with the veterinary uh, and or the vet clinic and the animal protection league. So we're in the process of just providing some estimates of costs of a few ideas that were brought up at that meeting. But uh, nothing will go back with a uh, report to council on just where that committee is and the solutions moving forward. So expect that. And then I'm looking for a delegation to go to uh, Brandon this Thursday for 7 p.m. for the Federal Boundaries Commission uh, delegation. So that will probably be an overnight trip, but uh, we can discuss that at the end of the meeting. Uh, and Swan Valley West has requested a date for purchase services, so we'll, we'll get that done at the end of the meeting as well. Okay. All right, then we'll continue on, uh, 8.1. Whereas the attached authority service agreement has been filed with and approved by the Canadian Radio Television and Telecommunications Commission, the CRTC, and will enable Bell as the designated NG9-1-1 network provider for Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, and the Atlantic provinces to provide NG9-1911 services to your municipality, whereas the execution of the attached non-modifiable agreement between the Town of Swan River and Bell Communications is required for the public safety answering points, the PSAPs, identified in Schedule C of your agreement to migrate from E911 to NG911. Therefore, be resolved the Town of Swan River accept and sign the attached Bell Next Generation 911 Authority Service Agreement. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councillor White? There's a term in there that I, I concerns me. It says, where's the execution of the attached non-modifiable agreement? So they're saying that agreement can never be changed. And I'm, I wonder when they say that. that uh, I, I'm not a techie, so I'm not sure what that means. Um, do, we, do we know the length of the actual agreement? Shouldn't it not be... Uh, Closing date on the agreement. I think I would think that during the term you can't modify, it. Uh, but I would think that it must have a closing date or six months prior. Six months. Um, okay. Six months. One. Did you have something? Well, I just assume that this is going out to 180 some communities in Manitoba. Non modifiable means they don't want to. They don't want 180 different modifications. They want yeah. one standard agreement. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Council Morio. Uh, Council Delorier uh, took the words right out of my mouth. It's a, it's a standard agreement going across all the provinces and every municipality in each one of those. And it's basically it's an updated version with uh, replacing the old Manitoba E911 agreement to the next generation uh, agreement to update it to the new provider. Because um, MTS is no longer available, so it's Bell MTS or Bell now. So the agreement is now with them, with, and it also outlines the, the new and enhancements that's going in there. Okay. Further discussion? 
Counselor Delorier. I guess just just to highlight some of the enhancements that this the the next generation nine one one it'll allow you to make nine one one phone calls from IP based phones. So like, because not everybody has like an actual landline. Some have like internet phones now. Okay. So you, they'll be, you, they will eventually be able to make nine one one calls. Perfect. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion. All in favor. It's carried. I need a mover in a second. Oh, did I not do that? <laughs> what did was it not Councillor Friesen and Deputy Deputy of Maryland Tony? Sorry, my fault. I missed that. You got it there? Good to go, yeah. Okay. 8.2. Result of the Swan Lake Watershed District audited financial statements for the year ended March 31st, 2022, be received. Moved by Deborah Marilyn Tony, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Would that be, should that be the 2021 financial year? Because we're still in 2022. Uh, the watershed follows the province's year end, so it ended uh, March in March 31st, 2022. So it goes from like oh, April yeah, 1st. I, I yeah. yeah, no problem. Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. 8.3, result of the Swan Valley Planning District audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2021, be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10, 10.1. Result, result that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29250 to number 29377, totaling $2,840,904.40, as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5161 to number 5169, totaling $115,336.98, as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $795 as listed on Schedule C, and direct deposits totaling $758.93 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Councilor White. I, I was under the opinion we were still debating that uh, Kubota. Tractor? No? Okay. I missed the meeting. That's it. Thank you. For the discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Carried. 10.2. Whereas the 2022 capital budget included $50,000 for a tractor, cab, mower, and blade, and the 2022 financial plan included $510,000 transferred from accumulated surplus, of which $50,000 was to fund the purchase of a said tractor. And whereas the tractor has been purchased at a cost excluding GST of $54,142, therefore be it resolved that $50,000 be transferred from the accumulated surplus to the general operating fund. Be it further resolved that $4,142 be transferred from the machinery replacement reserve to the general operating fund with the condition that the reserve be repaid from the recreation department budget in 2023 or in 2022 should the recreation department have a surplus in 2022. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Um, just a question here. I thought last year um, we put half of that amount, 25000 
in capital last year and then the, another 25,000 capital this year. So what, why are, how come it's coming from uh, last year's accumulated surplus? Like, is it a procedural thing or the CFO. budget should have that separated over two years? CFO Grita. Uh, the 2022 financial plan had 50,000 coming from accumulated surplus, so that's the resolution. So, so where did the uh, 25,000 that we budgeted last year um, for that go? That was supposed to be set aside for half payment. Went to the recreation reserve. Oh, it went to the reserve. So shouldn't that... So don't we have a conflict there? If we have last year's budget putting 25000 and then it would be almost like fifty to 75000 now allocated to the tractor instead of only fifty. Well, no, the, the contribution to the reserve last year, I guess it initially was intended for a tractor. Uh, the budget passed this year stated accumulated surplus. Like it, that basically leaves 25000 in a rec reserve, but it doesn't have to be used for a tractor, but it does have to be used for what that reserve was built for, which would be recreation equipment. Is that clear? Uh, I'll have to do some more digging. Or are you saying you would like to take 25000 out of the reserve to pay and reduce the amount well, coming out of accumulated surplus? Well, that's last year we put that $25,000 into recreation reserve for that uh, purpose. And then it was my understanding that the other 25 was put into their reserve or on top of their budget for it this year. So. I'm not sure why it has to come out of accumulated surpluses. If we're already allocating it, already put fifty thousand in the reserve last year, or twenty-five, and then another twenty-five this year. CFO Grenada, do you have any comments on that? It's uh, whatever council decides. Okay, so um, Councillor Morial, do you want to then have this? Perhaps table then? Uh, yeah, table to the next, I would make motion to table to the next meeting so I can plot that out exactly where that, where intentions were, so. I think that's the okay. right, I think that's the right uh, way to go, but uh, motion to table from uh, Council Morio, uh, seconded by Councillor White, all in favor to table. I didn't even see any hands. Okay, it's carried. Yeah, I got no problem paying the invoice. It's just making sure which accounts it comes out of. Fair enough. Thank you. 10.3. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by the Manitoba Assessment Services on August the 8th, August the 22nd, and September the 1st be made to the 2022 property and business tax rolls with the resulting increases totaling $696.02 and the resulting reductions totaling $1,196.82. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 
whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and sets the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252.1 of the Act, well, sorry, 252.1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A totaling $3,880.66. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A to be added to the corresponding tax property tax roll and collected in, the man, in that manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act, be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advise that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective October the 1st, 2022. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? carried 10.5 result that the unpaid utility accounts listed on schedule a totaling four thousand two hundred and seventy nine dollars and sixty three cents be added to the corresponding property tax rolls and notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amount being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for un paid property taxes effective October the 1st, 2022. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. 10.6. Result of the unpaid utility accounts listed on Schedule A totaling $6,038.88 be written off as uncollectible. Moved by nobody. Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Delorier and Councillor White. How, how come these can't be added to taxes like in the previous resolution? Go ahead. Uh, so, a number of these are from the uh, the COVID when it, we had the moratorium on turnoffs. And so the bills got larger than they normally would. Um, and normally we have a turn off and then we add it to taxes, but because that uh, resolution was written with respect to the state of emergency, thinking that the state of emergency would be over in two months or three months, but extended out to two years. Uh, so we didn't feel it was fair to add these ones to taxes because it had gone on for so long. And now we're back to doing turn offs uh, when bills are overdue. So there won't be the extended period. You're still on. So the people whose names they were in, do they get added to a list here that basically? Yeah, if we they won't... go somewhere else, yeah. Because like, they're do... renters that have left town, as far yeah. as we can tell, but yeah, if we know of them coming back. So how. How, how does that list get cross-referenced when somebody comes in to make an application? Is it something that automatically gets flagged by their name? Or, or is it there's a, a separate document that, you know, we'll have to, our admin, admin staff would have to keep track of? Yeah, it's a separate document. So, like, Diamond isn't set up to flag by names. It's all by accounts uh, that are tied to roll numbers. So it's a little bit difficult to do it that way. So... I'm not going to say that's going to be 100 percent effective, but Steph knows most of the people that she's dealt with, so it kind of comes to mind, and then she can check that too. Okay. Let's see how poor you think. Ah, uh, Darren answered. Or okay. Darren Harvey answered. And Council White, you're done. You're good. Okay. So Deputy Marilyn Tony. I guess I'm still. Uh, I don't ever believe that something is uncollectible, but um, I guess you've explained it. 
well enough in terms of COVID, but I just, I, I definitely have mixed feelings on, I understand that there were situations that COVID brought on, but at the same time, you need to pay your darn bills. So I don't know. I think that there were, there's a will, there's a way to, to get money that's owed to us. I guess the, the issue we've run into is multiple tenants have changed and the owners are, I can't say that they're completely unaware that their, their tenants aren't paying their bills, but you know, we could be dealing with some tenant that was in that dwelling two years ago, didn't pay their bill, and now we're expecting the owner to, to fork up. We just felt, feel it wasn't fair to the owners. I, I guess I, I understand that at the same time, but it's um, those. Uh, it's either the the landlord who should be ensuring um, that those thing that their bills are being paid up paid up. That's what you do as a as a as a landlord. But at the same time, we are now asking our ratepayers to pay the tab for all of these accounts that went delinquent. So I, it's one, it's the chicken or the egg situation. Councilor Deloney. I, I guess some of these bills are from 2017, 2018, and 2019, like before COVID was even a thing. So I, I, can we sell this to a collections agency? I don't know if it's, it might be too small where a collections agency might not want to bother, but maybe somebody would buy it. Um, I don't know if that, that's a process we've employed in the past or, and you know, the, the, and you know I, I, I understand the argument where we weren't doing shutoffs and stuff, but there's really only the one bill on there that would, would make me, you know, think, well, boy, that's a pretty unfair thing to pass on when it was our policy that changed. The rest of them, you know, it's a... Uh, if, if it was any other time, they could easily rack up that, a bill of those sizes in one quarter anyways. <coughs> I guess it may be two quarters, but, you know, I, I don't know. I, I would like to, if we can at least look into if there's a collection agency that would buy it. Or do, does this even, do we file a thing on their credit report? Are they going to have any ramifications for stiffing us at all? I'd feel a lot better if they're going to get a black mark on their credit report. Probably not. Maybe these people don't care what their credit looks like, but um, I, guess, I guess what's that? What's that process look like? This is probably the only thing that we have that would go on people's credit reports, eh? Yeah, I'd have to look into the collections agency. We tried. We tried that. I think it's like five years ago, and I think it's. I know that we decided not to do it because it wasn't worth the what we would get. They would ask. It's something like forty percent or something. Give them 40, but that's better than what we're getting now. Yeah. Give them 50. I think they would ask for 60. We would get. Give it to them. Yeah. yeah. Just, but see, we, we, we've done that before and chose not to. CFO Gadeta, do you want to comment on any of that? Uh, only that we've done everything we can with every account that we can, and these are ones that we would administration fields are uncollectible like whatever accounts we could transfer to a new location if the person moved to another residence in town we transfer those whatever we could add to taxes we added to taxes and there's still some that the utilities clerk is going to try to contact the landlord that the, for landlords that own quite a few properties to ask them if they can somehow get their tenants to pay up what they owe. And there's some that are on, are on a list for shutoffs and the list that's on the table right now is whatever's left over that it doesn't fall into any one of those other categories. Okay. Further discussion? If I, I concur with uh, Councillor Delory. If we get half it back, that's a lot more than, than nothing. Anything. And I guess the issue we'll run into is the like the these 
accounts are set to these roll numbers, and I, I guess that company could go after the person who owned it at the time. That's what we'll ask them to do. But you know, the some of these are, are purchased properties in the last four months, and the, you know the delinquent payments are from two years ago, so they've gained that. So the we just have to have specific instructions for you know these people to go collect people from the renters who have moved in. You know, who knows where they are now? But I guess those are the challenges that we'll expect to face. Okay, <clears throat> Councilor Deloria. So, so just so we're clear, our policy now is if you you get your quarterly bill, you don't pay it by the due date within. A month or two, you get your water shut off, basically, so you can't rack up a bill like this. Yeah, the only ones that wouldn't would be like an apartment, but then it would be added to taxes. Like ones, we can't turn off ones where it affects multiple, like multiple dwellings, dwellings, yeah. but then those ones we add to taxes because there's usually an owner of that building is the one paying the bill. So in a situation where we can't shut off water to a whole apartment, do, do we let the owner know right away, hey, you have a tenant that's... Uh, delinquent um, uh, you, you, right right away so he can yeah like so he knows it's coming yeah I, I guess with where, yes. where I'm at where I'm asking these questions I, I would hate to have council four years from now having bills from 2022 on a list like this saying it's uncollectible I want to make sure that the policies are in place that you know twenty one twenty one hundred dollar bills don't get racked up so yeah. um, but yeah, if, that, if that's if that's the policy, then that's that's good. Yeah, the, the later ones were on a shut off list already. Uh, you know, it is some time ago, but they were on that shut off list, and our guys just did not get there. But uh, yes, our our policy for notice is strong. We we absolutely notify those owners as soon as there's non payment. But is COVID. You know, everything changed when we no longer shut people off. We changed the whole procedure. Further discussion? Okay, then on the resolution. All in favor? Opposed? <clears throat> it's defeated. Eleven point one, resolved that bylaw twenty two thousand and twenty two being a bylaw to amend the business license bylaw be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion. All in favor. Opposed? Carried. Okay, move on. Uh, camera. Do we have anything in camera? I don't know. I didn't think so. All right. So with that, then number 16. Resolve this regular meeting council now be adjourned at 8.28 p.m. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.